Hello badasses! Now today I'll be giving you an introduction into simple dialog using just two scripts. We have a dialog manager which is a game object that needs to be present in Unity and we have the dialog trigger which can be attached to anything, an NPC, a signpost, or even an in-game event. The way dialog trigger will work is that it will read text from a file by line, parse out the name, and whenever MQ is called, the dialog will stop being pushed into the queue. Now, to get started, let's go to our scene view and click on a canvas. Now, the easiest way to stay organized is to create an empty. This empty will be our dialog manager, and this dialog manager will have our dialog manager script. Now, the canvas is designed to handle all scaling and stretching for multiple displays, so we have to set that up real quick. We need to make sure that our dialog manager takes up the whole canvas screen and that our anchors are take up the whole screen as well. Now something we can add to this is a panel. And what this panel is, is, well, if you've ever played Pokemon, this is a little text box that comes up. Now we'll call this panel something useful. We'll call it dialog box. And we need some sort of text to be shown to the player at this time. So we'll add component text and it's really tiny. So I'm going to move this to the top left corner and make it bigger. Make it take up, let's say this whole top part. Let's change the font to best fit. And let's put the max something ridiculous. Right now I don't really care about looks. I just want to get something working. Now remember like before, we want to have the anchors set to stretch and we want them to take up the area that our little box is taking up right now. We'll call this text name text, as this is where the character's name, whoever's talking, will be. We'll write down a reminder right here. Name goes here. Now, I'm going to duplicate this with Command or Control D, and I'm going to call this one dialog text. I'll say, instead of name goes here, I'll say dialog goes here. And I'm going to move this down a bit. Now we see that we have a location for both name and dialogue, and I'm going to move these anchors so that it fits more correctly in the area that I wouldn't mind the dialogue taking up. Also, I'll make sure the box goes all the way out to the anchors. This might be a bit too big now, and maybe best fit 300 is a bit overkill, but again, we're not looking for looks. We're just trying to get something working. Now for dialogue manager, we can add in our dialog box here, the canvas box, our text box, the dialog text, and our name text to name text. So we have a dialog manager, and basically what this works, what this does is the dialog box won't be active unless some dialog is being triggered. If you're not using the player anim controller that we went over in the previous video, make sure freeze player on dialog is unchecked and you'll need to go into the script and make sure that all of these freeze player on dialogues and all of these anim controllers are commented out. I'm going to run a freeze player on dialog for now though, but if you run into any issues where you can't advance dialog, feel free to uncheck this. Now, we have our dialog manager out, so let's go over what it actually does. The dialog manager takes in these objects that we just set, and once the game starts and it's in play, canvas box will no longer be active. It will go invisible. Next, we have functions for, we also have disable and enable controller, which will only be called if freeze player on dialog is set to true. In start dialog, we're going to set, open up the dialog box, uh, store the dialog from the dialog trigger, and print out the first line of dialog. When we call advanced dialog, we're just going to be calling print dialog. When we call print dialog, we're going to look at the queue of dialog we have, and if it's the end, we're going to clear and end dialog. If it contains the name, we're going to add the name to the queue, we're going to remove the name, and print the rest of the text. If none of these conditions are met, we'll just print the next line of text. And once we're ready to end dialog, we'll turn off the box, empty out all the dialog, and if the player is frozen, we'll unfreeze them. Now let's take a look at dialog trigger. 
an NPC signpost, or even an in-game event. In trigger dialog, we're going to find the dialog manager and call the start dialog function with the dialog we've been putting into our queue. Now normally we read in the text file here, which has special markers for if you're setting a name, which will split that into a line for a name and another line for the part of dialog it's attached to. And it will keep looking through every single line in, in the file. Next, we're going to have an event that triggers dialog. You can really trigger dialog from any script that you'd like. Maybe you like to face the player and press Z, so that'd be on trigger, enter, and you're pressing Z, or maybe you want to do something with ray casting. It's really up to you. This is a blueprint, so let's say if we trigger it and we're the player, we're going to trigger dialog, and we'll print a little message to debug. And now if we're staying inside of the trigger, we're going to be able to advance dialog with the jump button. We'll wait a little bit of time before you can, so you don't just press the jump button once, and then all of the dialogue plays immediately. Also, once we exit the collider, if we don't decide to freeze the player, then we'll just end the dialogue. You might have noticed that we had on trigger enter events. I'm going to use this, um, I'm going to turn this off real quick. I'm going to use this innkeeper right here. And first I'm going to add a box collider 2D. And make sure it is a trigger. And I'm going to add a dialog trigger to this character. I'm going to add in a text file, which I've written, sample dialog. The way that this script is set up to read text files is pretty simple. It reads them line by line. If there's a name here, it will store the name first, the print to the name text area, and then it will print the dialog to the dialog text. It will split everything up by line, and once NQ is called, even if there's more text in the file, uh, it will stop talking. And if there's enough demand for it, we can look into multiple choice another day. Let's see our dialog work. Some pretty cheeky dialog from me. The nice thing is that we don't have to edit this line by line in Unity. And now we're free to walk around and do whatever we'd like. That's the simple way to do dialog in Unity. I'll give a shout out to Brackies as he originally gave me the idea of a dialog manager and a dialog trigger. I hope I made this a little bit simpler for all of you guys out there. And as always, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I can't wait to play your game.